March with Time Speech at Alvar February 15, 1948 Small states cannot subsist as independent entities any longer without endangering Indian unity. We are trying to achieve national unity. Many rulers have realized their duty by merging themselves in the bigger entities. Rajasthan has to march with the times. <clears throat> It's your privilege and duty to bear the sword. It is equally your responsibility to ensure that the sword is not used to harass the weak, but to protect them. You should use it in a manner that the world would say you are the inheritors of an ancient civilization and are true to the real traditions of the chivalry of Rajasthan. You have to remember that you are born in a country which has produced a great saint like Gandhiji whose lifelong mission it was to plead for and espouse the cause of the weak, the downtrodden at the outset, outcast. People and rulers must realize alike that the old traditions of the rule cannot be carried on. The times are changing, new ideologies and new traditions now hold the field. Our power is not going to relax merely because there are some people who still dream of the power of their sword and still think of carving out a kingdom for themselves. It is to Gandhiji that we all owe our freedom. For the unspeakable tragedy of his murder, we have all to bear responsibility. Alvar also shares the blame. Why were the people of Alvar sleeping when a person in the garb of a sadhu was distributing leaflets which asked for Gandhiji's death in a most brutal and criminal fashion? I wonder whether people appreciate that they would not be able to safeguard the freedom they have won if the signs that are visible persist in the fateful courts. Freedom was not won by the sword and will not be protected by the guns alone. Guns can protect freedom from aggressive designs of neighbors or other foreigners, foreign states, but internally it is an honest core of the people and the true realization of the responsibilities of a free citizen that alone can save freedom from the mechanization of self-seeking and interested parties and individuals. When Rajputana was involved in slavery, the British government kept it steeped in old customs and traditions of dissensions which had to so often which had proved the pain of Rajputs. If after the foreigners have gone the same evil persists, how can we say that we have achieved the real freedom? Such freedom can be achieved only when we realize Gandhiji's dream of Ram Raj. Unlike what was in the past, the might of India is not concentrated in Rajputana alone. The army is no longer the monopoly of so-called military castes. Persons of all provinces and all castes have now a share in the defense of the country. It is the responsibility of every citizen to feel that the country is free and it is his duty to protect it. Every Indian must now forget that he is a Rajput, Jat, Sikh, etc. He must remember that he is an Indian 
he has equal claims to the country and responsibility also. The rulers have understood that they are trustees of people and servants of the state. Their relations with the people are those of father and children. They must zealously safeguard the interests of the people whose welfare must be their primary concern. In the context of the present conditions, it implies that they must stand out as constitutional rulers exercising their influence by benevolent advice rather than any active interference in the sphere of administration. Similarly, the people must realize that their responsibility towards their rulers by pointing out their true interest to them and speaking the truth. Small states cannot now subsist as they did in the past. They have also to realize their destiny in the present scheme of things is in the country. They can only play their true and honored part by merging themselves in the bigger and more sizable entities. The watchword of India should be unity. India has made a tremendous sacrifice for freedom. As a part of living India has been torn away. The rest cannot be but must be a whole. We are trying to achieve that unity. Many princes have realized their duty. Urissa, CP and Gatiawad rulers have pointed out the way by making heavy sacrifices for the sake of Indian unity. We hope Malwa and Bundelkhand rulers will also follow suit. If all this can happen within five or six months of India's attaining freedom, Rajasthan too must march with the times. Those who are still dreaming of establishing a Rajput hegemony are clearly out of tune with the present trend of events. It is the duty of the majority of community to protect the minority whose interests, as it were, come as a part of a trust to the former. Muslims, after all, number only 4 crores, Hindus about 30 crores. It is incumbent on them, therefore, to protect the Muslims in India. The need for unity is great. Do not create dissensions among Prajamandal workers. Dissensions do not do any good to anybody. Unity in the conduct of administration is essential in every state. More particularly, is it necessary in the state of Alwar, whose finances seem to be in a precarious state. The lower subordinates are ill-paid, recurring deficits in such limited income are bound to lead to bankruptcy. All this has to be remedied. Rajputana has yet to realize its duty. It has yet to breathe the air of freedom. Gandhiji's message of removal of untouchability has still to find an echo in every Rajput's heart.